All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on what part of the world you're connecting from and you're watching this right now. Thank you for being a part of your voice, your impact. Um, yes, we've had a couple of huddles to cross, especially today. I uh, decided like, you know what, it's about time that we brought this on this platform. Let us see how we can make this consistent because we've been consistently doing this show for the last... I mean, it's been almost 20 or 21 weeks now. And we started on Instagram and then we moved to X and now we're here um, today. Hey, Madam Abigail, thank you so much. Good to see you, right? And now we're here on YouTube. And I think we might be continuing the series from here on because this uh, platform is more is more flexible, it's easier you know, to connect to. We don't need to... Um, you know, do too much and people don't need to like have the app or have an account to be able to watch something on here. So let's hope that this is where we're going to pitch our tent for now. Okay. So I implore you to invite your friends, your family to be a part of this. What we're doing here basically is to help you discover, you develop and deploy your voice for impact, influence, and income, because we believe that your voice is meant for impact and you can begin to impact your world using your voice. I'm not here alone. I'm not doing this alone. I have my co-host with me, Grace Edibo, who is a coach, a therapist, and a mental health advocate, as well as a speaker. Uh, amongst many other things, all right? So I'm going to invite her upstage now. Oh, we're going to have this conversation. Today is the first time we're test running, you know, YouTube again. So we're going to be quick, fast, short, and straight to the point. And hope you be, uh, we hope that you enjoy the conversation. Hello, hello, Gracie. How are you doing today? Hello, hello, the energetic DJ. Woman, I am <laughs> Oh, it's good to be here. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, how, absolutely. you know how interesting it is, you know, us trying this and trying that. And it's part of what, I mean, we are own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, when you're, when you're sharing things that you're trying to achieve, you know, with what we do, so, uh, um, your voice, your impact, when you're talking, and you're seeing true life stuff happening, us trying this and it's not working and we're trying that and we're trying this. I mean, how else do you want to preach? Or how else did you say we're practicing what we are preaching? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. And I mean, I know you already that saying, whether rainfall or sunshine or heaven is trying to shake, as long as, we can still stand on the ground. We have to do this session today. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Even if I have to do it for 10 minutes, we have to do it today. And I'm glad that we're finally figuring this out. And hopefully, we're not going to have all this, you know, back and forth with network and things like that. And hopefully, as we go along, maybe we'll be able to expand to other platforms. But for now, let us just pitch our tent here because I beg, YouTube is big. Okay, people can always come back to watch it. People can always come here to see what's going on on the channel. All right, I see you, Odi Woma. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for retweeting on X. I appreciate you. Okay, so today we're talking about, I should actually type out the topic of what we're talking about today. We're talking about how, give me a second, let me look, let me, um, yeah, let me get that together. How our me mental health affects our productivity. And earlier on, when we were trying this out on X this morning, a lot of people were actually um, interested in the topic because, you know, some people were like, they had questions. Like, they had questions like, you know, they wanted to ask about this topic. And earlier on, when we also started, I was asking the question to everyone in the, in the room at the time to say that, if I ask them to rate themselves from one to five, what is their mental health status? One being, oh my, I don't even know that I am all right. <laughs> and five being, well, I think um, I got things in control. My head is in the right place. I've put structures and boundaries in place so that what I see, what I hear, what conversations I have is not affecting my mental health. And I have a couple of people say, you know what? I'm not like totally cuckoo, but at the same time, I'm struggling. I'm off and on. 
And that was really interesting to know. And also, I appreciated the vulnerability and the sincerity in that response. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm off and on. It's not, I'm not there yet. Somebody says, in fact, I think I'm a three, right? So, and that's why I know that this conversation is very important. Now, as a mental um, health advocate yourself, I'm sure you have a lot to share uh, when this where this topic is concerned. So today is a flip. Normally, eh, that's how Grace would just come. Uh, we we'll to introduce ourselves. I should not be. I should be chipping, chipping. Is this one? It's me that will be chipping things this time. She will be the one speaking additional value back to back as the day hot. But as she would always say, when we come, in case you're joining us for the first time, in case you don't know who the energetic EJ is or who Grace Adipo is, we're going to introduce ourselves quickly so that you can get to at least know something about us. Um, I am the energetic EJ. I'm trying to look for where the name is. The name is supposed to be here somewhere. What's going on? What is going on? Did they change something on StreamYards? Yeah, show display. Oh, because the topic is there. Okay, I can't see the name right now. Okay, no problem. Hi guys, this is the Energetic EJ one and only. I'm a coach, I'm a podcaster, I'm an event host. Um, and I am just an advocate for using your voice. So whether I'm coaching or I'm hosting or I'm podcasting, I'm an advocate for you using your voice for impact, influence and income because I just believe that this is the most precious gift and instrument that God has given to us that we can use in changing our world, in impacting our world, in leaving the world a better place than we met it, all right? And in passing on, you know, knowledge, strategies, um, truth to the next generation. So it is very important that we appreciate it and we actually use it positively. And so this is what I do. All right, I'm not going to shut my mouth up and I'm going to leave it off for my co-host, Grace Edewa, to take it away from here. All righty. First of all, introduction. First of all, introduction. All righty, righty, righty. Okay, so I actually find it hard introducing myself because I, I know that I am a bundle of things, but for the purpose of this, I would um, I would say that I am a life and personal development coach. I'm also a cognitive behavioral therapist, a speaker, teacher, trainer, and I'm the founder of an NGO called Friends to Lean On Global Foundation. And the foundation is about educating people about mental and emotional wellness. And I absolutely love what I do. And this right here is one way I express my God-given talent. So yeah, that's what I am about for this purpose right now, right here. And I'm very happy to be doing this. And if you're going to be watching this later, hello. And if you're watching this right now, shout out to you. Send to your friends, call anybody you know that you love and you mean well. Send the link to them to come and join us. Can't hear you. Yes, yes, yes. I muted my mic so that there's no interference whatsoever. Okay, so guys, please share this link with somebody. Let them join us. I'm also busy sharing. That's why you see me going here. And I'm trying to share to my different groups so that they can join us here to have this conversation. Because I just believe that we really need to have this conversation now. And especially on this part of the world. You know, when we talk about mental health in this part of the world, I am grateful that right now is becoming a very... Um, convenient topic to talk about, a very easy topic to talk about. But before now, it seemed like ah, when you mention mental, they did not even want to hear the health behind it. Like, ah, am I mad? I'm not mad, I'm all right. It's like nothing's wrong with me, right? But we're beginning to know that even stress, I know that stress, we cannot do, we cannot do away with stress completely. There's also healthy stress. But when it is overwhelming, then it can lead to mental you know, uh, um, 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 so what's it? What's the opposite of health? <laughs> Mental on un unwellness. I can't hear you. Okay, you muted your mic. Okay, okay, yes, I muted. I mean, I wanted to do make sure. All right, so 
we can now say mental health issues or mental disorder or mental illness. Aha, uh -huh, illness. I think that's the one I was looking for. Exactly. So again, we now know that. So there are different mental, different types of mental illnesses, right? There is what you call bipolar. When so one person will be having like more than one personality. One moment they are like this, the other moment and you're wondering, I don't understand what's going on here, right? You have, um, there are people who have gone through trauma. You know, you have PTSD, you have HDA, you have different type of mental illness. It doesn't mean that they are mad, right? It just means that they are probably stressed mentally in one way or the other, or they are deficient in one way. So some people cannot concentrate. They can't even sit for five minutes to concentrate on one thing, to focus on one thing. Their mind is so noisy. That is a form of mental illness, illness, and it can be worked on. And so what we want to look at today, because for most of us, we are out here on social media. We are out here, you know, trying to build a business, trying to build a brand, trying to make a difference in the world. I am big on impact, right? I want to make an impact. I want the world to know that, ah, we are here. We are not leaving this world until we leave everything, until you pour out everything that we have brought in, that God has blessed us with. That's the concept of living fully and dying empty, right? We have all those things that we want to do. But then it can be overwhelming sometimes. It, the Also, the internet space is, man, it is alarming with the amount of information that we are being bombarded with. And sometimes it can stress us out. And so that's why we want to talk about how does our mental health affect our productivity? And what are some things that we can, or practices that we can begin to in, imbibe in or we can begin to engage in to help us maintain a healthy mindset or a healthy mentality. And that's what we want to talk about today. So I'm just going to leave it Give it over to our therapist in the house. Hi, Omoge Kari. Thank you for joining us today. Please, if you're getting value already, kindly share this link with more people so that they can come and be a part of the conversation. If you have any questions as the conversation is going on, do not hesitate to pop it in the comment section. I'm going to be putting it up on the screen, right? Like, you know, just, you know, we'll be putting it up on the screen like that. And as the question comes, we're going to, going to take them and tackle them, all right? Because again, we want to make this sweet, short, and straight to the point. Okay, over to you, Grace. What, how does our mental health affect productivity? Let's go with that first. And then we then come back to what are some practices that we can engage in. All right, thank you. What an amazing question. And um, before I even start with that, I know that um, because of the wave, the wave of mental health, the well, well, we in the mental health space, we are happy, even though we're not even close to where we want um, to be in terms of awareness and um, um, awareness most importantly, but we are getting there. People talk about it, you know, very clearly these days. Before, I would I would just even say what mental health, but be, before I even say what our mental health is, I would say, what is our physical health? You know, because sometimes the knowledge of one thing would help us understand the knowledge, I mean, what another thing is. So as a human being, when they say this is a complete human being, what makes a complete human being? Our mental, emotional, physical, spiritual well-being is what makes us whole and holistic. Now, we, we, we've been practicing physical wellness and physical, when I mean physical wellness, I'm talking about even other things like you having malaria, typhoid and all those things. Because I mean, if somebody is sick and the person is lying down, you'll be like, oh, oh, what's wrong with you? Do you have um, fever? You know, they will touch you and they'll be like, oh, you look very um, down. You must be really sick. And then they would, you know, show empathy, take the person to the hospital and all of that. But when it comes to the to the aspect of mental health, it's not something out there, out there, because it's something going on on the inside. So people don't get to see it. So what is our mental health? Our mental health includes 
are psychological, emotional, social well-being. It also determines how we deal with stressors. So life would always throw things at us. Our ability to be able to deal with life's challenges is what determines how our mental health is. So with that said, that's the background to, for us to understand that, oh, if you even see somebody that's socially awkward, you know, when I mean socially awkward, you know, people are doing things and, and you, I mean, if you see somebody that is looking haggard and is not looking like a um, the person is just looking awkward, you know, socially, talks awkwardly, irrationally, talks in a certain type of way, then you can now say, okay, this person might be going through a mental health issue. And like the energetic um, rightly said that most times, so there's this, um, there's this misconception when you say mental health, you say, ah, is this coin's coin? Is it? No. No, ma. No, sir. No, Egmo. No, 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 no. The only reason why people think that way is because we lack information. And this is why we are doing what we're doing so that it will get to a point where a primary school student will be able to educate anyone that cares to listen that, look, when it comes to mental health, you're talking about your psychological part, you know, your reasoning faculty, your um, ability to solve problems, your ability to think critically, your ability to contribute to your society, your ability to solve problems, all those things are centered around your psychological part. So when all those things are lacking, then there is a mental health issue. And then when we come to our emotional part, where you have very, um, when, when you're, you're struggling with your emotions, you know, you're not able to understand self-awareness you're not able to understand you know you're very irrational when it comes to your emotions you're not able to manage your emotions very well you know all those areas are also centered around our mental health and then lastly our social so that's where all these three things come to play so if you the way you think affects the way you feel and the way you feel affects the way you behave. So all these things put together, everything put together is what we refer to as mental health. So people abuse it these days. Some people even say that, ah, I don't have mental health. So I don't know what, I'm like, ah, 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 Sama, what are you saying? You don't have mental health. As long as you're a human being, you have a part of you that is your mental health your mind, your mental part that has to be taken care of. So having said all of this, you can now tie it to see what the productivity, how productivity comes to play. So if you're not psychologically well, if you're not, you're not um, emotionally stable, and if you're not socially um, fit, then your productivity will go down. It will go down, down, down. You won't be able to do anything. First of all, psychologically, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking about? What's going on in your head? What are you, what information are you putting inside of you? What are you, how are you seeing yourself? You know, all these things, it's just like a machine. This is how it is working. So our brains, all our brains are the part of us that, you know, put all these things together. So when you see somebody that's mentally um, challenged or, um, someone that's having mental health issues, when you ask them certain questions like this, direct questions, they'll be telling you B when they should be saying A. They will be saying things, you know, in a way that if you want to say, ah, is this person all right? So in that case, the person is having issues with his reasoning faculty, with his critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, you know, all those areas that is that one. And then you see somebody acting irrationally, you know, like something that happened, somebody sent me a message just a minute ago and said that, you know, somebody shot people, you know, um, in the US, an army person, an army officer, so shot about 18 people. And the person was asking me that he doesn't hear things like that happening in Africa, that is it um, normal? 
that you know i mean i mean what do i have to say about that you know you just know that this person is not all right because sometimes you can if you're not able to manage your emotions you can be angry and everybody where they're around you will collect in our own africa way the way we do those things when we are having issues with our emotions is that we if we're working in if we're in an office space you just notice that people will be collecting bad bulls, maybe one unnecessary query or one you know something very unnecessary so that's where you know dealing. and then socially you notice that people isolate themselves from social um gatherings you notice that they find it really hard to to communicate they find it very hard to be in a in a community you notice that uh, no 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 they become socially awkward i have i have some people that you know i i noticed and they were very and that's part of why we do what we do people that you know that ah, this person is vibrant this person is doing well and all and then all of a sudden person becomes socially awkward the person is constantly in their rooms not going out always there i mean all these things put together can affect our productivity and it would it, it will make us just feel that okay you know i i don't see any reason to do certain things and it starts to affect their physical appearance you notice that this person is looking like he never bath since money see ah, ah, person you know personal hygiene the person is not going to brush because because the person is not seeing the need to do that so these are the things that you can you know knowing what mental health is and knowing how dependent it is on our productivity no matter where you find yourself guy man woman anywhere you find yourself if your mental health is not top notch it will certainly affect your productivity no matter how much you try that's why it's very important that we prioritize and that's my favorite word to use we have to prioritize it like it should be number one number one you know as we said casually these days say, so my mental health is important though let us be saying it casually like that as if we don't know what it means and then we should now be doing the things that we should do to help us stay in that um space of mental wellness thank you dear so when you were talking about you know an example of you know somebody who is having a mental and and, and you talked about so, for example, they don't do the things that, you know, is natural to do with somebody who is well. So, is there, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, is there a difference between somebody that is lazy and somebody that, is, that has mental... Because somebody that is lazy is the person that doesn't want to bath. They don't, know, they, don't have, they don't know that they need to brush their mouth because they can't smell it. I don't, I don't know how people do that. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, it, we are the ones seeing it as, um, as a human being. All of us, at some point, we all struggle. So it's the the gravity of it that matters. Do you understand what I mean? It mm. is very normal to have a mental health issue. Normal, like you know, not feeling like going out. It's a mental. It's just that we don't we we label it. Um, we label it. It's a stigma now that we'll go to that. But that's another thing. That we all have it. Like sometimes it's it's your mood. It's it's your mood. You're not in the mood to do anything. It might not be laziness, but it's a mental health related issue because there is no drive, there is no inspiration, there is no motivation, there is nothing that you're pursuing that is giving you the ability to stand up and move. So it it it, it the name for it is it's not necessarily Your, what you... your mental health doesn't mean that it is a bad thing it just means that at that point so it becomes i mean it becomes hey god help it becomes a problem right when it's now taking too long it becomes a major problem when it's taking too long so I'll give you an example of what depression looks like when you wake up in the morning as a normal human being you have something that you're looking forward to there's something that is driving you. There's something that you want to achieve. Like, you know, we say in our coaching world, your goals for the day, your goals for the week, your goals for the month. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you're not interested in, you know, achieving anything, and this happens for one week, 
which happens to the best of us. There are days like there are even there, there are times that I will be for two three days. I'm not in the mood. But you see that third day, man, like this. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Get off, get off, because my my goal is ahead of me, right? You know. But when it becomes a problem, when one week, two weeks, three weeks, you're still lying down, you're not bathing, you're not brushing teeth. Ah, that one is a problem. Is you know. But when, when if it comes, you know, occasionally, that means you sometimes lose your mojo, which is normal. Even the most motivated person in the world loses his or her mojo sometimes. The only problem is when it becomes too long. So that's where it is advisable for such a person to see to a help. mental health professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is that is that is fantastic. Thank you so much for elaborating on that. Because again, I mean, for example, there there are also um, like you said, when you talked about physical health, it's the same way mental health. And that's what it is. It's like when you say physical health, it doesn't mean that on the day you are not held, on the day you are ill, on the day you fall ill, you become a bad person or you are written off out of the society. No, it's like I have a headache or I have a fever or I have a, a, a high fever. Or there are even people who have malaria that is so high it leads to schizophrenia, right? And then they yeah. start to like it affects the brain. It's the same way we're saying, see, your mental health, if it is sound, you are okay. You can think, you can do everything that you need to do. But if it's not okay, you is there there are symptoms that you begin to see. And so, you know, some of the things that you know I've also noticed that uh um, causes mental fatigue which can now lead to mental illness. Because it's the same thing with your body. With your body, if you are very docile, you don't move around, you don't work out, you don't, you're always sitting down, and you're on that seat, you will eat, or lying down on the bed all through the day, you will eat there, you will watch TV, you will do everything there, you don't move around. Your body would be, something will happen. Like your That's body right. would respond in an ill manner, because then, Maybe you start to have backache or wasting because everything you are eating is just settling into your body. You're not burning fat. You're not burning anything. And that's when you have more calories. And that's when you add weight. And that's when you start to breathe somehow. You can't, by then you finally get up to work. You can't even do go a flight of stairs. You'll be doing like, <gasps> you want to die, <gasps> right? Because you're not moving your body. In the same way, there are things, there are practices you do that would affect your mind, that would affect your mental alertness, for example, fatigue. If you don't sleep, you're watching a, a series all night and then you have to go to work. You see that buying, buying headache that will come. Mm. If you persist with it, it will lead to something else. You won't be able to concentrate. You won't be able to focus. You will start to get agitated. You start to react irrationally. You know, somebody will not say, hey, you would have, you know, flared up. Those are symptoms and those are things that can lead up to it, all right? So, um, Grace, as we wrap up the session, what, what are some practical ways that we can begin? I mean, now we're now gradually getting comfortable with talking about mental health, even though I know some people still just use it very lightly. Ah, and like you said, ah, me, my mental health is it's important to me, but if you... Ask them now. Say, okay, what exactly? Where is your mental health right now? They can't even tell you. But it's just like, you know, with us in Africa, we like to jump on trends. So if yeah. something is a trend, we'll just keep talking it. And that's why easily now, because we know that the first or the most popular condition with mental health is depression. Everybody is it's as if they are claiming it. Oh my God. I'm so depressed right now. Like, are you serious? <laughs> Like I mean, <laughs> very abused, very abused. Yes, I mean, you know, I, I, I think. Sorry to cut in there, but I think we all are in that category. So many years ago, when I was going through a phase in life, you know, I called it depression. You know, but in hindsight, understanding and studying mental You're illness, and I was just going through a small phase. You know, in comparison, if I compare, ah, uh, more um, because. The way I bounced back without really seeking, you know, professional help. And then I just, you know, I just changed my environment. Apparently, the environment I was at the time was a major trigger and it was just making me uncomfortable. And um, because I was there for a while, I just felt I was, you know, like, I'm so depressed. I don't know. You know, but uh, immediately they took me away from there. And this was like 10, 11, 12 years ago. And 
I've not felt that way. I've never felt that way, even though I feel sad sometimes because it's just normal. In fact, yeah, th there is even a saying that if you're constant, it's not even a saying, it is a it is a fact. It's almost impossible, yeah. If you're always it is, it, 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 it's a fact when you you you're constantly happy. Then it's right? also a mental health issue. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. You know, because we have to, there, there has to be, even yeah. if you see nature, there's always balance in everything. There's raining season. There's, if, 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 if this, this season, if rain falls all through the year, um, mm -hmm. you and I won't be here because we, yes. what are yeah. wash us away? In the yeah. same vein, in our minds, in our attitudes, in our behaviors, we have to get to the point where we understand balance, you know, and then we can talk about that later. You know, but I just had to chip that in when I was thinking I was really depressed. Even though, you know, it's not like I would call it depression, but when miles. we see the depression, eh, you know, we will shut up and use what and use the right term, like we're sad, we yeah. were, were not motivated, we we're just not inspired. So because of that, we were just flat and yeah. blank, mm. you know. So mm. right. Right. I and mean, I think that, and, and I think that is why it is important that we keep talking about this thing so that people can also know the terms to use because it's it's kind of pinches me when people easily just say I am because again it's actually truthfully you know with real depression when you're going through it you are unaware you cannot even explain, you can't put your mind, you can't put words to it. You just, you are in it and it's like you can't rescue yourself. And that's why most times people who are truly depressed need intervention because yeah, they just you know. can't help themselves. Absolutely. Exactly. So for you to be saying it and saying it, you are okay. Because for me, when I hear people just say it like, oh, I'm so depressed right now. I'm like, no, you are not. Oh, you're you know, not heard the one that they say, I'm very depressed, but just give me money. My depression will go. <laughs> you never see a person wake Bibilonia, we still get depression. You know, <laughs> I said, when I was asking, I was asking a random question. I was just asking questions that about mental health. I wanted to understand the people in my space. There's something I do, you know, most times to help me know that the people in my space, because if I want to start, if I want to change the world, I'll, I'll first of all change from where you're me, circle, where you me are. and then my circle before we talk about you know um the, the global um, audience right so i usually ask this research question to help them to help them understand in that question you know um is something that when you catch yourself answering you'll be like oh i didn't know i didn't know about this thing now that grace is great you understand your questions you know but it's deliberate and it's for us to know what we are saying you know Ignorance is no longer an excuse. Some things that you don't know, you go information. The information out there is practically tricking us. Yeah, it's practically it's... tricking us, right? But it's how intentional you are and your ability to to go for the exact information you're looking for and how to apply it to your life and to the people around you. It's what Absolutely. Matters. Absolutely. So guys, if you have any question around this topic, please drop it. If you also have any contribution, please feel free to drop it in the comment section while we're there, you know, um, slowly rounding this session off. And again, is I think, you know, one of the reasons we're doing this and one of the reasons that I believe that this is an important conversation to have. And I know a lot of outfit a lot of people a lot of brands you know a lot of ngos are doing a lot around this sphere and i think you know if you have any opportunity to join any initiative of such please go ahead and do it is this importance of understanding the different type of emotions we have so that we can name the things that we might be going through correctly again i'm just big on this fact that you can't just consistently claim it because the thing is, when you when you do that, we're talking about your voice. Your when you consistently then claim any small thing that happens to you, you're going through a bad day, you're going through a rough day. Somebody, you know, you were served breakfast. Somebody duped you of your money. You know, it, you can be going through pain, sadness, um, 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 disappointment, anger. There are all these array of emotions. 
before you go and just keep saying, no, I'm so depressed, I'm so depressed. And the truth is, words are life. Words are powerful. Because when people keep saying that, it's like they keep calling that spirit. And that's when you now keep feeling the weight. And it just keep weighing you down. Because you're calling it. When you say, I am, I am, me, I am happy. I am well. I am whole. Well, I feel sad. You see the difference? I am sad and I feel sad. They are two different things. Because when you say I am sad, it's like you are calling it and you are putting it on and you are wearing it. But when you say I feel sad, you are kind of separating it from you to say this is my feeling for the moment. And we all know that feelings are very flimsy. They can change. One moment somebody can be happy right now. If something happens to warrant sadness, they will cry. If something happens, somebody that is like boiling, if somebody is <laughs> like, it's like parents, you see this with parents and kids a lot. Like your yeah. child does something, you are boiling and you want to say, are you, are we, and then the child does something, mommy, I beg, no, no, it, 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 it has a way they will do it. You won't be able to help it with all the anger will just wash and you start laughing. Do you see that those are emotions? But when you call, the things that are not yours to yourself, you are wearing it and you are, and you are affirming it to be your, your reality. So Grace, what are some things, some practices that we can engage in to keep our mental health stable? Okay, thank you so much. And um, I, love, I, lo I love what you said. Name it, don't, 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 um, I think there's a fancy claim way it. of saying it. Mm. Uh, name it, don't claim it. Don't claim name it. it name it don't claim it i think it's a fancy way of saying it and then i want to just add i love to use illustrations because when you use illustrations it will help you understand it better i want the child to watch this and they understand it right you know so when you sit down and you open your mouth wah, 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 and you're eating boom boom everything that comes to your your front and you're just eating whoa, whoa, whoa. you know you and i know that your body will tell you stories that you yourself like who saying to me you know it <laughs> happened to me this this past week because i lost my dad about this time last year so as this week that last week was coming i, I became very emotional mm -hmm. you know i started eating all sorts and the the the, the weekend where when we now did the thanksgiving i noticed that i was very uncomfortable the dress that i made was too tight because I wow. overdid it. Yes, I overdid it. And for me, eh, when I overdo it, it shows. In the same way, that's exactly how it, it, it happens when it comes to our mental health space. Our mental space is those things we are receiving even without knowing it. Mm. This one now, eh, the bad part of our mental health and the things that we grasp and take in is that when it comes to food nobody will force you to eat it is either you using your hands to feed yourself or accepting to be fed hmm. on the flip side when it comes to your mental health and the things you take in the things you're taking in subliminally and it depends on where you are per time it can hmm. be in your house in your space, in your workplace, in your in your shop, where you are per time. Now, if you are constantly in a place where you're talked down, where you are seen as um, nothing, where you are always trampled upon, if you that's in the workspace, if you are in that environment where they deal with you subliminally, they talk down on you, they tell you things that don't edify you don't improve you that disempower you when you get back to your own space it will start to cook in your mind that's mm. where you start to see that maybe i'm not good enough maybe there's something wrong with me and when that is persistent when that is consistent then it becomes a problem it becomes a mental health issue that's where you see some people become socially awkward because they have they have um, been exposed to information that has trampled upon their 
their their self esteem. So that's when mm. you see things like low self esteem. You see even as bad as you know um, psychosis. So I'm I'm using this loosely, like because all these things they are like from primary secondary school because it comes to a they point build where up. Yeah, they build up. So that's why intervention intervention is very key. That's where you mm. think you see things. You know, you get to a point of depression. You're not able to do certain things because people have told you that you're not good enough. People have told you that there is nothing that you can amount to. People have told you that there is something wrong with you. And you have taken that and you have run away yeah, with yeah. that information. And that information mm. is now in your head, cooking jollof rice, pounded yam, beans, you know. So by the time Be you have analysis. allowed these things, mm. yeah. By the time you have allowed these things to build and um, cook all sorts in your brain, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. So you, you don't see possibilities. You don't see yourself as anything good. So what are the things that you can do to help you maintain a fantastic mental health space or your mental wellness or emotional wellness? What do you do to ensure that you are in a good space? Now, again, I would say it happens to the best of us. Even me talking to you right now, there are times that I will hear things that I will come back and I will, you know, but because over the years I've been, I've been um, doing certain things that would help me uproot. And I mean, uproot some of these things. It's so easy for me now. You know, it was easy. It was harder for me. Because it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, in fact, it's like, you you're, you're, you, you practice it so well that you don't even let it stick in the first place. Like as it's coming, you are bouncing it off. Like, nope, not here. Yeah. Mm -mm. And the funny <laughs> thing is that, my 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 voice my inner voice before i had you know i mean we have voices in our heads whether we like it or not the voice that will tell you that you're not good enough the one that will tell you that you're good enough it's not a bad thing it's a bad thing when the voices are so many that you don't you're not in control of any of it now i have practiced some of these things that the the dominant the dominant voice in my head is a voice that says, shut up to nonsense. The sage. Yeah, the sage. The sage. Yeah. <laughs> so all those saboteurs and all those um, um, critics and all those things in your head, always telling you you're not good enough, there's something wrong with you, this, with this. You know, I don't just shut them up. I allow them to express themselves. Like, yeah, go ahead. What do you have to say? Thank you. What you just said is not a fact. To take your quiet, take your corner, take your, your little corner and get the hell out of my head space, right? <laughs> you know, so it took a while. It took a while for that to come and I'm still practicing. So this is the interesting thing about it. You never get to the end point. I think you, you get to the end point when you're no longer transition. Yeah, when you when transition you from this. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So the good thing is if you're aware enough, if you are well enough, if you are aware enough to understand that these things could come in different forms and that even though they come, you can still be in charge. So how yeah. do I do that? Number one is I practice meditation. I practice meditation so well that I don't have to sit still and do, you know, so that people have misconception that you have to sit down still and yes, that's the best thing, you know, it's a misconception. Sometimes my meditation is as easy as, you know, sitting down in a space and reinforcing oh. who I am. Hmm. Reinforcing who I am, what I am about, that my mind, anywhere I go, I know that I am so amazing that if you come with your nyama nyama, now you go fail. You know, so we have to reinforce our what we say to ourselves. So meditation comes to whichever way you, you think is good. And it's not a cliche. People say that, mm, any sponsor they'll say meditation. Mm, any sponsor, listen, I have come, my research, I'm a scientist. So I love to work with facts. As a scientist, I would experiment, I would try, and then I will now come up with a theorem that look, this, this shit is my friend, works. So meditation is not that uh, it's a cliche and people talk about it. Now, when you hear all those voices, when you, you're calm and you sit down and you're able to listen 
and you're able to identify where some of these things are coming from, you'll be mm. able to deal with them as they come. Secondly is journaling. I've been very bad with my journaling lately. I used to journal a lot. And for me now, sometimes, you know, when you do something too much, you think that you cannot mentally do some of these things. You know, I remember. I <laughs> mental notes. But, but wait, so on that journaling, on that journaling quickly, is... Yeah. The the journaling part, I think I think maybe maybe our next session we'll talk about we'll just zone in on journaling itself. Because I think the journaling is not just about the what people struggle with is how. Because again, even I personally, I love I love to write down things, but not every day, right? Okay. But again, is how do we journal correctly? Maybe we'll do that in another session. But yeah, journaling, yes. But what are we journaling? I'm writing all about my day. Like, okay, today um, I went out and the <laughs> and this person slapped me and I slapped my own back. <laughs> is that journaling? Or is journaling like, okay, um, what did I learn today? How did I react? Or the way I reacted to this person today, was it right? If it was right, why do I think it's right? If it was wrong, why do I think it's wrong? Okay, if this happens again, how am I going to do with it differently? So, how, you know, I think we need to maybe do a whole session around journaling. But I think one of the reasons people struggle with journaling is they don't even know how to start. Like, what would I be doing? What would I be writing? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And yes, we will do a whole session on journaling. And um, journaling, I always like to use. I used to use them, you know, for on the side, journaling and brain dumping. Brain dumping is like dropping it down. So sometimes what we struggle with is when we hear things, I don't know if it happens to anyone, but I, I, I check through the day, what my conversations all through the day, what it was like, what I did better and what I did not do well, you know. So for me, journaling is, some self-improvement practice that I do mm -hmm. to catch myself to be better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So today, if I did something, you know, and yes, journaling is unique to anybody. The whole idea of journaling is putting to paper or writing down how you feel, basically. Mm -hmm. Basically, how you feel. So if you want to start type right, you, you want to start writing, well, 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 I'll just be saying it. That's a job, it's a channel. It's just like talking to someone. When you're talking to someone, there's something called talk talk therapy. You're talking mm. to someone. Journaling, the difference with journaling is you are your own therapist at that time. Whilst you're writing, you now start seeing things that you should have done better, that you didn't do better, and how you will do it better tomorrow. Right? And then journaling is helping you to, you know, summarize your day and even check yourself if you're doing well, pretty much it, you know. So for me, how do I journal? And I said, it's now mental for me because I have done it so well now that I would be like, okay, when I was talking to, you know, what we're doing now, I would later go back and I will be like, okay, what did I say that didn't come out well? How would I do it? <sighs> did I do bad? If I now write something and I'm looking through it, the next thing I'll do is, ah, babe, I beg that time we will talk yesterday because I have written it down because we're carried away, we're distracted, we will not be able to deal with it. But it will be there somehow inside of us, locking around and mm. we'll be finding it hard to be able to express it later. But when, once we write it down and we have dumped it on our papers, maybe next time we'll be like, hey, I remember, you know, even that time we'll be in the talk, you get one kind of thing where I talk, people like, say, this don't make sense. I mean, how you see them? And you now tell me that, I oh, know. It makes sense. So it went well. You were able to do something. And then, I mean, you would help me, right? So for me, that's what journaling is. Journaling is the point where you can. All righty. Yes. Yeah. So it, 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 it shows, it, it, it explains how um, we can be, I mean, what we can do and what is like tracking. I think the best way to put it is tracking. You're tracking what you have done all through the day and how it can help you. Mm. Okay, that's fantastic. And then that's, that's number two, that's journaling. And then yes. it, it, it's never, I, there's nothing, there's no time I don't add working out and exercising. I mean, for me, that's like a cheat. 
It's a cheat. It's a cheat. Ah, it's a cheat. Because since there, I discovered that it's a cheat, man. It's a cheat. If you're able to do something daily, you know, it's connected. There is no one that can stand on its own, physical, mental, emotional, and all that. No one can, you know, be well on its own by itself. You know, it it has to be in tandem. My favorite word again, my number one, my number two favorite <laughs> word. The first one is prioritize, the second one is tandem, tandem. right? So if you're not able to, I mean, if, like you said, you rightly said, people just sit down, they're not moving, they're so big, they're now rich, they're now too wealthy that they cannot even carry their own bag. They are now sedentary, they're just living. And as you're just sitting down like that, that's how, apart from the physical health issues, it's also affecting your mental health because when you exercise, your body would secrete some hormones that would help you feel good. You know, there's this feel good. And we just need a bit, a dose of that because sometimes it is a shortage. And that's another mental illness um, talk on its own. Some mental, um, some mental health issues are issues that um, are um, centered on the hormones that we, we um, the shortage of hormones that we have. You know, so in that case, sometimes, that's where they will need the help of, you know, psychiatrists to inject them and give them some of those to help boost all those things. But averagely, our bodies have the capability to be to able produce to produce those yeah, to produce chemicals, some of those chemicals mm. to help us stay, you know, mentally fit and emotionally healthy. So exercise can help, help with that. And then yeah. finally, you know, self-care is all these things put together. But I am a, I, I preach self-care all the time. And what self care? Just knowing when to to take unplug. Care of yeah, unplug. You know, no, you know. There, I can give like one hundred things to do, but you know, when I give four, and you're able to even do this four, and you're intentional about it, all the other things will fall in place. Like for me, I am very, very intentional about my friends and the people I allow in my space, and I say mm. that with apology. All the people, and I dare say, if you are in my space, if you're in my space, trust me, I'm learning something from you. And I know that you're helping me in a way and we're helping each other. So I'm very intentional about that. So if some people come and I see that, well, are you are you taking out of my life or are you, are are you adding? Life, or what are you <laughs> if you're not changing any of this, come, and, useful, show you, come and, you, and stress you, don't come and stress me, you, you know, right? But I mean, again, and I have wonderful friends. I'm I'm big on friends. I mean, the name of uh, my foundation is Friends to Lean On. I'm very big on friendship, family. I am an advocate of family. I love community because I also understand that we can talk about all these things. But if you don't understand that no man is an island, then who's fooling who? No man is an island. So it's very important we know that social even social gatherings, you know, not gathering, gathering like that, because some people it can even be a trigger. If you go for a party like me now, too much party stresses me. So I know when to to connect. Like I, I, I have some, I mean, I belong to some clubs that can help me be a better version of myself. You know, so some of those things are the things that I do to help me stay in a very wonderful mental health um, space. And I know it's something that can also work for people absolutely around the world yeah. absolutely fantastic thank you so much and i think one last thing i would just share is just try and create time to spend in nature so sometimes take a walk under the sun um sometimes go to a park where you can see green green their flowers green you know or even animals just spending time in nature also helps you you know find your zen or connect with you know yourself again because like we're, we're we're closer to nature than we know so sometimes when you just find that you know i want you to notice that sometimes even if you go to the beach for example just because it's natural the breeze the sound of the wave the sand on, under your feet or on your body it makes a difference so try as much as possible i know you're a very busy person but in your busy schedule find time to spend in nature take walks Every now and then, even if you don't want to do, you know, workout, workout, take walks. It helps. It helps. Just target 5,000 steps, 10,000 steps daily. Take a walk around your, your vicinity. Thank you so much, Coach Grace. This has been a fantastic conversation. I hope that you found this um, conversation very helpful. Thank you so much for being here. 
And this is where we draw the curtain today on your voice, your impact, until we come your way again. This is going to be a thing now next week, hopefully by this time, which is 1 p.m. West African time. Um, it should be 1 p.m. Yeah, it was supposed to be 1 p.m., but we had to do some setup, and that's why we moved it to 1.30. So 1 p.m. Um, West African time, 4 p.m. GST, and we'll see how we continue to do this. And if we need to change again, we'll change the timing, but to say we'll not continue this series, nah, we are way past that right now. <laughs> All right, guys. To say. And yeah, before we leave, your voice, your impact. Remember why we're doing this. Um, yes. Today is just for using mental health. So for productivity, your voice, your impact is important. So know yourself so that you can use your voice for impact. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're looking for a community to help you with that, you're not sure where to start or what to do, then you can join the Vim Connect community. If you check on this channel, on this YouTube channel, you see the link to join the Vim Connect, which is the Vim stands for Voice Impact Movement. And there we have people who are growing in their different ways to using their voice, whether they are podcasting, doing audiobooks, creating voiceovers, or just literally creating content to express themselves and to build your confidence in speaking, then you can be a part of the community. Okay. Um, Joanne says, I hope you can talk more. Joanne says, I hope you can talk more about journaling. It's something I am yet to grasp. Okay. Thank you for affirming that. We're going to work on that in our next session. So just join us next week. We're going to look deeper into journaling and practically look at what are the different ways that you can journal um, uh, effectively to actually help you grow. I've literally seen people who journaling helped them save themselves from diving or spiraling into places that they didn't want to go to just by journaling. And actually, I'm, I'm also a witness of that. Last year, I was just in a very, very terrible place. I I wasn't sure. I'm like, no, no, nah, I cannot be depressed. It's not possible. But I could not do it. Like I shut down for like a week. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't work. I was disinterested in everything. All I wanted to do was cry and sleep, cry and sleep. Right. Thank God for people like Grace, you know, who I could speak to from time to time to talk to, you know, and, you know, they could remind me like, what is wrong with you? You're okay. Okay. We know you're going through a lot, but again, it's just life. Right. But with that, working out and just writing and for me what helped with my journaling then was a gratitude journal so every end of the day i'm just going to write down the things that i'm grateful for for that day and i started to tell i'm grateful for the sunlight i'm grateful for the fresh air it was it was towards this time of the year so i was grateful for the cool weather i could go i could take a walk I, again that really helped me in that season so journaling is a good one and we're going to talk about it next time all right, take care now. I will talk to you next week. Bye, guys.